Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I have been working on stocking up my Etsy shop recently, and one of my favorite new products has been wood ornaments, which you can see a couple of them here behind me. I wanted to share with you how I make them, just in case you want to try it for yourself. So I'm actually not going to be showing you how to make this ornament. I'm going to show you how to make this one. Please don't be afraid of how complex this one looks. I can really break this down into a step-by-step -step layer guide for you. Before we start though, I really want to talk about the main paint that I use. So most YouTube tutorials that I've seen out there actually use acrylic paint. So the paint that I am using is actually called gouache, and I'm terrible at saying gouache, so I have no idea if that's the right way to pronounce it, but gouache is a great in-between of watercolor and acrylic paint. So why do I use gouache over acrylic? If everyone else is out there using acrylic, why would I change it? I am coming from a background of doing watercolor paintings. I also used to be an oil painter. I like blending. Blending and reworking, I never want something to just, once it's dry, I can never do something to it again. But acrylic, when it dries, it's, it's dry. You can never rework acrylic acrylic. But with gouache, you can actually rework it. Even if it dries, you can typically just put more water on it and rework what you did before. You can also completely erase it using water. Because of the ability to rework with water, gouache is actually really good at blending and fading out colors. So if I wanted to go from like a blue sunset to like yellow in the sunset, it is really easy to make that happen. Whereas I think acrylic is a little bit more like hard lined. Um, so the, the only downside to using gouache that I've experienced is that you actually have to put a top coat on it and you can't just paint or pour a clear finish on top. Anyways, moving on to the actual tutorial. Because these take me about two to three hours, it is going to be a little bit faster than real time, but I will do my best to slow it down in sections and show you the steps that I take and the layering of paint that really help bring this to life. These are all of the supplies. All of these will be linked down below in the description. This is my palette tray. You can use this or anything you don't mind getting paint on. Next up are the paints. I use Reeves gouache and sometimes another brand like this Academy paint. The main stars of the show though are the Arteza wood ornaments, which come killed drying and in packs of 45. After that, these are my paint brushes. These are all really small and mainly used because of how detailed the ornaments are. I also like to keep a sharpie on hand, and these are for the dark darks. As for finishing touches, I use faux leather cord so that you can hang the ornament. Twine does come with the Arteza ornaments though, and you're welcome to use this as well. Lastly, I use a UV resistant acrylic finishing spray to protect the painting and also the wood. So first up here is drawing the outline to your ornament. Definitely use a pencil for this and keep it to a quick sketch. This sketch will disappear as we continue to paint. It doesn't have to be beautiful as it will go away. Next up is the first layer, which is solely focusing on the sky. It's best to divide the ornament into sections. So here it would be the sky, mountains, lake, and then the foreground with trees. If you are doing a landscape painting, then I do recommend having a background, middle ground, and foreground as it helps create more depth in the landscape. Anyways, going on to what is actually happening. The first steps are essentially putting the first of many layers down on the sky, mixing blue and white together. Afterwards, it's time to move on to the foreground. It's a good time to work on the ground, as you can see, because it's separated from the sky. And I don't want the sky bleeding into anything right now as it keeps drying. Then I essentially just continue these steps gradually to hide the wood grain more and more, also making sure to let the sky dry because I don't want anything bleeding into the white areas of the sky. 
Once the sky or background is completely dry, I move to something slightly closer to the viewer. This is the second to the sky here on this painting, so this is the mountain range. The key here is to blend the mountain with the sky some, and keep it all very light. The main contrast will be the foreground, which is where the Whomping Willow is. Keeping the background lighter will really help make the dark and the bright green on the Whomping Willow pop. The lake is also going to be painted now, as it's a similar color to the mountain behind it. It's okay if the mountain and lake blend together, and I'm doing it right now because I want the lake to have some time to dry. Now that the other mountain and the lake are both dry, as well as the sky, I can move on to the next mountain. The mountain here is still light though, and somewhat still blended into the sky. It does have a little bit more definition than the one behind it, and it changes color because it's closer to the viewer. Key tip here, mountains tend to get a little bit more blue the further away they are, and you can actually notice this even in person if you're looking at a landscape. So here I'm blending the sky and the mountain together some to create a slightly hazy foggy look, and again, blending is a great reason why to choose gouache over acrylic. So a little bit of a jump here, um, but you can see where I've sketched in some trees. The light trees help me know where I want everything, and then I can start building up the color. These will start to be a little bit darker than the background because they are closer to the viewer. I'm using the smallest brush I own to keep the texture smaller and a little bit more intricate than the background. Now on to the tree. The outline is pretty much all gone at this point, so again, definitely don't spend too much time at your sketch at the beginning. Also, to note here, the background is completely dry at this point. It absolutely has to be, otherwise your tree will blend into your sky. After the dark of the tree is dry, I add some lighter color onto it to help bring out the texture and help it pop. Then I take this time, since everything else is dry, I go around and add some texture to the other areas of the painting. Sometimes for the darkest part, I really love going in with a sharpie to make it even darker. Once the tree limbs are all dry, the leaves can start being painted. These leaves take many layers of dark, then light, and then dark again to help it pop and look a little bit more realistic. From here, you know, I really just keep working and pushing the painting until I'm actually happy with it. This part is personally just a personal preference, but I think the more time you spend on creating art, the better it will look in the end. If I had stopped even, you know, halfway through this painting, then it wouldn't have looked as great, and you can see that by just looking at the video. And this is how the ornament turned out. I let the ornament dry completely and then went back in for details and touch-ups. Afterwards, I sprayed it with my acrylic setting spray three times per each side until I felt it was well covered. Then I tied it up with a leather cord to finish it all off. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you haven't already, make sure to hit the like button and the comment button, and if you would love to see more tutorials in the future or check out more of my art, definitely make sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions at all or want any help making ornaments, my email is always in the description box down below, and you can always feel free to comment on here or message me on any of my social media and I will try to get back to you. Alright, thanks so much guys, and have fun!